what's up people i am back for another video today we're reviewing the movie called the stepfather this is actually my second time watching because i watched it the first time a week ago i don't even really know what prompted me to watch it it was just i think i was watching like uh no, no i know what it was i was watching dead meat and i think he had did a review of this movie and i pretty much just kind of prompted me to watch it and the movie itself is actually really good. And there was sequels, but I'm only going to do the second one, which I might do now because I'm going to wait to see Smile 2. I'll probably maybe next week, maybe next um, next Wednesday, and then we'll do Stepfather 2, and then I'll do the remake next Thursday. I'll just do them back to back. Because I'm skipping the third one because Terry O'Quinn, who's the actor for Henry Morrison slash Jerry Blake, um pretty much um is only in the first two and then he's gone in the third one they get a different actor so i'm not even gonna i'm only gonna do the first two and then the remake <laughs> but man the the thing about this film that definitely makes it stand out is that wild opening where you just see henry just you know you don't know what's happening you just see he's, just, he's covered in blood so something happened you know there was something crazy that happened. You know, he's cutting his beard. He's, you know, grooming himself. He's taking a shower. He's trying to change his look. And then he goes downstairs with a different look. He's clean shaven, shorter hair. And then you gradually go down the stairs. You see, like, there's a, like, finger blood, blood, finger, bloody fingerprints on the wall. And then you see bodies in the background. So now you realize what's happening. Like, oh, this guy killed his family. Um, in the background, they don't say who they are, but it's like assuming it's his wife, um, probably either brother or some kind of male, because you could see the male body and then an older daughter. And then when he walks out the door, you see the daughter's body, youngest daughter's body, which I'll be honest, that was kind of hard to watch. That was like, God damn. And he's just casually, and then it's like, he goes outside, it's just like a normal day. Everybody's getting their newspaper getting ready to go to work. It's like a normal fucking morning that most people have. And you need just this crazy shit that happened inside this house. He then just goes on a ferry, dumps the evidence, and then we just jump a year later. He's married to this mom. Um, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't remember the mom's name, but the daughter's name is Susan, who, you know, obviously she doesn't have an adversarial relationship with her father or the stepfather and her mom because she doesn't like her stepfather. And her therapist tells her to go see him, who eventually the therapist, unfortunately, he gets killed because he asks too many questions. And basically the film is him just kind of slowly breaking down because people more and more, because there's a, a, a reporter named Oliver, who's the brother of the murdered wife, the, the wife who was killed earlier, um, writes an article about him and it goes around and that's when Jerry finds it and he slowly, you realize there's something up with this guy. And I do like the little things they give you. They they don't give you an origin story, but you get little like things like what he wants a perfect family. That's basically what it is. He wants a perfect family. And if he feels like the family's not perfect and he doesn't feel like it's used for you, he courts another widow and then he gets he basically kills the the family he's with. So he's done this before you find out he's done this out multiple times. And that's mentioned throughout the film. So I like that there's a little bit of lore, but it's not like they don't fucking spell it out for you either. And Terry O'Quinn really does a good job because he plays unassuming. Like in the start of the film, he seems like a normal dad. He's trying to, you know, please Susan gets her dog, you know, is, you know, eventually he grows her, tr gains her trust for a second, but then he freaks out on um, her basically love interest who she falls throughout the, he's like a friend at first but then he eventually starts falling for her. but quit um but um jerry at this point he's jerry at this point make, make he accuses the guy of trying to rape his daughter and that's when it, his relationship with her is strained again <laughs> and things are starting to fall apart so apparently he cuts his hair and goes under another pseudonym, Bill Hodgkins, and basically moves to another, goes to another town, and basically finds another, starts courting another widow, 
and essentially is starting to basically the he's gonna get rid of Henry. His plan is to get rid of Susan and his and his wife, and then move on. Like that's one thing about this film. It's a bit of a slow burn, but it really gets going. And there are kills throughout. Like he kills um the therapist. He kills um Oliver later on in the movie, and obviously the opening kills. <clears throat> So it's not like a big body count movie, but I, I think it's a well done horror. I like the aspect of you know this guy's fucked, but you know, to this family, he's just a normal guy, but then more and more you see this guy break down, you realize, yeah, there's something up with this guy. I mean, granted, obviously you knew something's up with him when he killed his family, but it's becoming more and more obvious to the audience that this guy's is straight up psycho. And I really I think Terry O'Quinn really did a good job in this. I think he's the VIP of the movie. Like, he is my favorite character in the movie, even though, yeah, he's fucking evil. But the third act's a little bit of criticism. I feel like the third act's a bit rushed. Because I get it, he's trying to get rid of Susan and Henry, you know, Susan and his wife. But I feel like it's a bit rushed. Like, I feel like, oh, because, like, she asks him some questions because she finds out that he quit his job. Because he's gonna get ready to move on. And he confuses the identities, and then he basically she realizes he realizes she's on him, so he beats her. Hits her with the telephone and basically beats her seemingly to death, but then she comes back later. And then you do get a pretty good chasing with the daughter, with Susan. But the problem I had was I do think it was a little rushed. I think the third act should have been built up a little bit more. There should have been more scenes of Susan realizing there's something. Like, if you've seen the movie, um, uh, Disturbia with Sam, with, uh, Shia LaBeouf, where he starts being weirded out about his neighbor and he starts, like, you know, actually trying to investigate. I think there's, they should have had an aspect like that with Susan. I get it. They wanted to have this Oliver character who's the brother, but they, it could have been both of them. Maybe have a scene where she's in contact with them, where she starts noticing little things. Like, there is a scene that's kind of like that, because she reads the article, and then she starts kind of thinking it's him, and she wants a picture of Henry Morrison, but Cherry manages to intercept it, and he basically doctors a different picture and makes him look like somebody else. So she doesn't think it's him. And he comforts her after her therapist's death, because he makes it seem like it was a car accident, even though he actually beat him to death. Um, I just wish, like, I think there should have been more scenes of her investigating him. I just, I felt like the third act was a bit rushed. Like, we need to get him to go, now he just needs to go crazy and start trying to kill the family. And I understand that, but I think they could have made it a bit more gradual. But it's not like, it doesn't ruin the film, but I just think that's a little thing I would have just wished they they built up that third act a bit more. But other than that, I think it's a solid film. Um, I'm interested to see how Stepfather 2 plays, because in a way, this film could be a one-off. He gets stabbed in the chest in the end by the, the, by Susan. but And then she destroys the, the, the birdhouse that she, he helped build her earlier in the film. So, in a way, this could easily be a good one-off, but I'm interested to see what Stepfather 2 is, because it is the same actor. So, and, you know, and if it, the way, the way he stabbed, it doesn't look, like, I could plausibly look at that stab wound and be like, okay, I could see him plausibly surviving that. So, we'll see where it goes. Um, I've not seen it, so I've not actually seen it. I'm actually going to not watch anything of it. I want, when I watch it next week, to be the first time I watch it, so gonna be a fresh watch but overall i think the first stepfather is great i love this film definitely gonna make it a add it into my list of movies to watch it's a pretty good it's a great film so out of 10 i definitely give this one like a 9 out of 10 about i think it's solid i have a little bit of gripes like i think the score could have been better the mom's not that great of an actress i think she's she's like the only character that i felt like She's not really a character. She's just there to have, you know, the, the strained relationship with her daughter, but that's it. And I don't feel like it's that fully investing where I think they, if the mom was maybe a bit better of an actress, it, it could have worked better. But everything else I thought was pretty good, so.
So the plan is, um, whenever Smile Two is on the the on the seas, I'm hoping it's up tomorrow, because then we can watch it tomorrow. If not, if it's not up by tomorrow, I'll just do Stepfather Two tomorrow. Yeah, we'll just do Stepfather Two tomorrow. But if not, um, then I should if Smile Two is up, watch that, and I'll plan to review it. It'll probably be late tomorrow. We'll see. Same time as today. And I don't know what we're going to do Sunday yet. I might try to find a Screen Rant article or um, or maybe even Stepfather 2. We might even do it Sunday if if uh, if I can. If we do Smile 2 tomorrow, maybe we'll do it on Sunday. We'll do Smile 2 on Sunday. I mean, Stepfather 2 on Sunday, yeah. But other than that, I overall enjoy this film. I, I think the first... Uh, First, uh, the stepfather is great. I think it's an interesting premise, and yeah. So, and apparently, supposedly, it's based off John List, who's an actual murderer who killed his family, and then went into hiding. Um, and you know, assumed a different identity and stuff. But the problem is, this movie came out in '87, and I think John List got caught in '89. So, but I get it. it, it even then, it, it's probably loosely based. So. Anyway, uh, let's get into the review. Um, no stream tomorrow. Um, uh, there's gonna be a, we have tech issues tomorrow. Um, Cream's having tech issues right now, so no, we didn't end up doing a SmackDown review, or we're not gonna be doing uh, uh, stream tomorrow. But still, subscribe to Pin Down Podcast. But anyways, let's get into uh, Stepfather. This opening scene, man, is fucking wild. The fact that you just see this dude just... <coughs> As you just see Henry go up to the, like, his window, <coughs> you know, cutting his beard. <coughs> He's covered in blood. <coughs> but you don't know what has happened yet. That's what made... <coughs> it makes this opening so, like... <coughs> crazy. You don't fully... <coughs> You don't know what <coughs> what has happened yet. <coughs> you just see him covered in blood, cleans himself, cuts his beard, cuts his hair, <coughs> cuts his beard off, and uh, packs his suitcase. <coughs> He's just going down casually, and then you realize the carnage that's actually happened. As when he gets more downstairs, you see bloody fingerprints handprints on the wall then you get down so he just like pulls picks up some stuff off the floor while you see up in the background a shot of the family dead and i love like it is the crazy thing about this opening is you don't know what happened you wonder what happened you read about it like he, he basically stabbed his family to death because they say that later in the newspaper they actually go into the story of it so I do like though they don't go into the story of it at the start. You just see the bodies, and it's tragic. And then obviously when he walks out, before the shot of the he walks out, you see his daughter, and next to him is the bloody bear and his youngest daughter. It's clearly a kid, and his and uh, her teddy bear covered in blood. Like it's a pretty fucked up sight. And then he's just walking outside whistling like nothing's fucking happened. He grabbed his newspaper. I think he says hi to somebody. And then he then just walks off like nothing fucking happens. Just gets on a ferry, dumps the evidence in the ocean. And then the film just jumps ahead a year. A uh, year later, where he's married now to a new woman and her daughter, Susan, who their relationship is strained because of him. Because even the start of the film, like they're him and his daughter, her and her daughter is doing something. And the moment he comes in, you can tell like the 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 just moment change. And you know, and it, I really think too what I like about this film. Let's be real, a lot of kids have always had this about stepfather or even a stepmom, where 
you think they're fucking up your relationship with your parents. You know, that's always been a thing. So I, I definitely can understand like making a movie. Obviously this is a you know crazy example where they're actually a serial killer. But you know, I still think it's an interesting premise and not just that aspect, but obviously the aspect where we get more later on that this guy kills his families when he realizes he doesn't need them anymore. When he realizes they're not the perfect family he wants. That's what he longs for is the perfect family. I do like they don't really go into why. I don't know. Maybe in the sequel they do. But I re- as of right now, just in this one, in this film, I really like that they don't go into why he wants a perfect family. He just kind of, you don't even, he doesn't say it. You hear like there's a scene with a cop where the cop's talking to the brother Oliver who wrote a, an article about what happened to her to to his sister because he's the brother of of the murdered wife and he's trying to find the guy he did it and the police have no leads because they even basically that's where we get the reveal that he basically has different identities that's where we get the reveal is from the cop there's a scene where oliver's talking to this head i'm assuming lead detective and he goes into like this guy goes in hiding he even mentions the whole perfect family thing and there's scenes too where, where, uh, where now he's Jerry. Now Jerry's no longer Henry. He's Jerry now. He's a different identity. Where, if things don't go his way, he kind of has like almost a mental breakdown where he like just talks to himself, mutters to himself, just like has like a mental breakdown. Especially the scene later, where um, um, this is after the article. Where after the you know he found the newspaper story about the murder of his wife, and he has to try to play it off, but you, you know you can tell in his little mutterings that's when you kind of also do get a little bit of him talking about the perfect family. You kind of have to really listen into what he's saying, but I really think Tara Quinn does a good job at the multiple almost personality disorder disorder in a way because. He does, he's able to obviously act normal. Like when he's just normal Jerry Blake, who's just the normal guy, like at least on the surface. You know, he, everybody likes him. Because even the town likes him. There's a lot of scenes where he's just talking to the sound, to the town, or obviously the there's a scene they're at a, having a barbecue, and that's where the story, he finds it on the story. And yet he plays it off like, oh, these kind of stories hit me. Obviously what he's actually affecting him is that Oh no, my story, my, my uh, story might come out, you know, my life might be broken, kind of thing. And um, I guess we can jump to the first murder of the film, where he murders um, Susan's therapist, who Susan sees throughout the film. He's a decent enough character, you feel for the guy. Um, around the same time, she finds out about the article and she wants, she starts thinking, obviously he's the murderer, but obviously, you know, the mom's not going to believe her because the daughter might just, mom might just think, oh, you're just saying that because you don't like him. So obviously that's a kind of a theme to, not a theme, but like the story throughout the film is she has definitely a strained relationship with her mom, Susan, um, and her therapist goes under, you know, he acts like he's about to, because Jerry's selling a house. And he goes to the house where he's selling, and he's basically acting like he's a buyer, but he's asking, like, actually a bunch of personal questions. And Jerry basically realizes you're not. He think, I think he thinks he's a cop, and obviously kills him, too, because he's on to him. So he, he beats him to death with a... a a, basically a wooden pallet like a wooden uh, just wooden thing beats him to death and then ra- wraps him up in the, the taper and buries the body oh it takes his body puts it in the car and kind of makes it look like a car accident um, and then this is the scene where he tells Susan about it but obviously he makes it seem like a car accident happened and, you know, he hugs her and he kind of starts gaining her trust for a little bit. And then 
this is where like the, there's a guy she sees throughout the film who's like a friend of hers who initially kind of starts off as a friend but they kind of start growing close you know there's even a scene where they have like a look you know that look in movies where they're like about to kiss and um, I don't know if he was an okay character. He's a decent side character that for Susan to talk to. Uh, I'm surprised he doesn't get killed. He actually doesn't. He pretty much after the scene where I'm jumping ahead a little bit, where um, he this is where he fucks up his relationship with um, his stepdaughter is with he fucks up his relationship with Susan because Susan comes home kissing the guy. But he tries to make it seem like the guy tried to rape her and make this whole big deal about it. And then she runs off. He then gets into an argument with um, his with the mom. <clears throat> and then this is where he then heads over to, I think, a different part of town. And this is where basically he's casing out a potential new place because he's starting to see the cracks in his family he's staying with now. So like the first family, when he starts seeing cracks, he kills them and finds an owl for him to go somewhere else. While this is going on, Oliver manages to actually get his location. So he's actually able to go to the house and he figures out where Henry actually is. Because while this is going on, I think um, Susan actually starts really being weirded out about him because she goes back to the house where her therapist was murdered in. And she notices a part of the, like the the wall the rolling paper that wall for what for the wallpaper was um, missing, and she saw blood um, on the floor when he because the blood probably seeped through the paper, um, and then people came in. And, but granted, it was a little bit of blood because it was weird. Because then the next guy you see like I guess a realtor selling the house to a potential customer. So yeah. Um, Um, so he, go, um, Jerry poses as Bill Hodgkin. So this is a potential, another alias he's going to go by down the line. Cause he even finds a widow who he potentially is going to start, you know, dating and basically finding a new family. So he's going to start finding a way to kill, um, Susan and, and her mom because, he even quits his job, you know, realty, because that's when his wife finds out about it because she gets a call, because or I think she calls them and she wonders if he's been at work and he's just she they mentioned he hasn't been at work in days he quit, and he comes home and he tries to play it off, but then I think he answers one of the questions wrong because he confuses it with a different alias. So then, this is where my problem kind of comes because this is where it's sudden. Very sudden, now he's trying to kill them. I think they should have had it be a little bit more gradual. That's why I was saying maybe the movie needed maybe another, like, hmm, I'm trying to think, like, maybe 30 minutes. Like, I think this film was, like, an hour and a half. Maybe I think this film could be a case where a slasher could be, like, two hours. I think it needed maybe that extra little 30 minutes. I think that little, the last third act should have been a bit built up more he's trying to plan on killing his family. Because it felt like, okay, kill you now. Kind of deal. Because, and I get it, you could argue he freaked out because he answered a question wrong and she was on to him, so he just freaked out. But I think even that aspect of it too, I think there should have been a scene where she slowly figured it out that there's something off with him. I didn't really feel like they, there was that. There was that moment where he didn't answer a question and I'm like that's it and obviously that's where he freaks out he hits her with the telephone and um seemingly beats her to death and he throws her down the the um, hits her a couple times and then he throws her down the the attic or the basement and then she kind of like falls so it looks like she's dead and then he tries to kill Susan and that's where I mean like the chase was good I just felt like it was a little rushed it was like all of a sudden, like, oh, he's trying to, you know, kill him all of a sudden out of nowhere. You know, I get it. The third act had to happen, so I just, you know, whatever. It doesn't ruin the movie. It's just I wish they built it up a little bit more. But I get it. 
the chase was still pretty good. I thought the chase scene was pretty good. You know, her running up the, the, the attic and then she's trying to hide from him and he's like, everything's fine, honey. Like, he's still trying to play normal when he's actually, he obviously isn't anymore. She leads him out and then the, the this is where um, Oliver manages to find the right house. Um, or actually, because I think Okay, what actually happened was um, Jerry's about to attack uh, Susan, and I think he hears the door knock, and that's when he, he uh, confronts Oliver, and then Oliver realizes it's him, but Oliver, but uh, he, Jerry gets the jump on him and stabs him, or I, I guess we could say Henry at this point. He's basically the killer because Henry, the way I see it, the way the film kind of sets it up, Henry's like his real, real personality. Um, that's his real person. So yeah, he ends up killing him, but she, man, the mom takes the gun, shoots Jerry, but not enough to kill him. Oh, and also the daughter had like stabbed a piece of a glass in in, the, in his shoulder too. So he does take a little damage, but it's believable enough where he's, he's not like Jason or Michael shit where the shit that happens to them like they be beat most normal people, majority of people if they were just regular would be fucking dead. They could not take half of the shit Michael and Jason, you know, the damage they took. But yeah, then the daughter manages to, to stab him, like, seemingly fatally, and like, the chest looks like the heart. And then he tries to mutter, I love you. Mom and daughter Holt hug. She takes down the bird house, which there's a scene earlier where he helped he built her. And yeah, and that's pretty much the end of the film. You know, so I really enjoyed this. This was a nice little just one. In my mind, especially if two's not good, I'm fine with this in my mind being a one-off. It, it, it's a interesting premise. This killer goes into, has an, you know, kills his family and then goes into an alias because they allude to he has done this to more people. Like he's done this to multiple families where... And I like, you get a little bit, not necessarily of his origin, but like of his like kind of motive, like he wants this perfect family, but his little, obviously from the cop, but there's an even some of his little scenes where he's just muttering to himself, freaking out, you know? Like the moment things were kind of going wrong for his, with Susan and his, you know, his wife and Susan. He's just kind of ready to kill him already and already ready to move on. He's already getting ready to move on to his new life. So it really is such an, it isn't it. And I really think what carries this film generally, I think is a good, because I, I do like the story too. But I also think what really does carry this film is, is the fucking, um, is Terry Quinn. I, I think his performance is, so convincing, especially the way he's able to fold the town at the start of the movie. Fold the mom. He eventually even gains the trust. That's what I, that's the other reason I felt like this movie was a little bit short. I think there should have been a, a little bit longer of Susan trusting, trusting um, Jerry for a little bit longer. Like there should have been maybe a good 20 to 20 ish minutes of the movie. Because I felt like the trust was like in one or two scenes and he's she's already, the next scene, that's when he freaks out on her. And they already, like, I think they could have a little bit of a buildup. Like, maybe after he gains her trust, he starts taking her places. She does more things with him. You know, there's even a scene, maybe he's all, she calls him dad even, you know? But whatever, that's little things. I still think it's largely a good movie. It's well performed, well acted by everybody else. I think most of the other characters are pretty good in the movie, you know. Um, decent, decent enough score. Um, that opening scene is fucking wild, man. I that opening scene is, if I had to say one of the craziest opening scenes, just opening, just intros in a horror. This one's it. I mean, way he just casually just cut, you know, cleaning himself up because you see he's covered in blood. You know, I mean, obviously, you kind of in your mind can realize that he's probably killed somebody. It's probably not animal blood. 
and then you see the car engine downstairs, and then he's just casual about it. Oh, I'm just gonna pick up the stuff off the fucking ground. <laughs> well, <laughs> fucking family's dead, and you just killed them all. It is crazy, like, it, and then, obviously, you know, thankfully they didn't show the killing, but, you know, the, his dead baby girl, you know, little girl is pretty sad to see, and then the bloody bear, so, it, it's such a wild scene, so, not the, obviously not the shot of the little girl, but the shot of him just walking downstairs while the shot of the family in the background, that's going to be the thumbnail. I just, that is a wild, like, it's even wilder if you watch the movie, just that intro. The movie alone, I almost say, is worth it just for that intro. Because I actually think the movie in general is pretty good. It's paced pretty good. Largely, I, like, besides the third act being a little bit rushed, I would largely say it's paced well. I don't feel like it drags. I don't feel like there's a portion I'm like, oh, okay, can we, can we, can we hurry this up? Or anything. I think also, like I said, Terry Quinn's performance. And he's in a lot of the fucking movie. Like, he's in a lot of scenes. He gets a lot of screen time. And I think that very much helps. Because he's... Him and obviously Susan, because she's the, the main... She's the... I guess you want to call her the final girl. Well, not fully, because the mom is alive, too. So... But, yeah. I guess in a way, she's like the main final girl. So... Generally, it's a good film. I definitely recommend it. I, I hope Stepfather 2 is pretty good. I hope it's a worthy sequel. Because in my mind, I'm almost looking at this as a one-off. I'm like, this is, it just has a, just a, the premise itself is a one-off. But the way he does get stabbed, and if the film is good enough, I can, I'm fine with it existing. I'm okay in my mind. The way he got stabbed, I, there's a plausible way he could survive it. It's not like he got his throat slit or something, something like that, where it's like, no, he can't come. Or where you can tell it's clearly a heart shot. It wasn't the heart. You can tell it wasn't. So at least there's a way they can find a way out. So then we'll see how they explain it in uh, The Stepfather 2. I don't know if it's just called The Stepfather 2 or if it's The Stepfather insert under title, subtitle or something, but... Out of 10, 9 out of 10, I really like this film. I think definitely I'm going to watch this one more. I kind of wish I watched this earlier on. I will only watch this <clears throat> last week. I mean, it's crazy. Like, I thought this is one of those I really wish I watched earlier because I just think it's well acted. And, you know, I love horror, but, you know, it has, like, even though this came out before, I don't know if y'all have seen this. Maybe one day I'll review it. The movie Fear with, um, uh, Mark Wahlberg, and uh, I think it's Renee Zellweger. And he plays like an abusive boyfriend. He's not like in hiding, but it, what I mean, what it reminds me of is he has like a split personality. Because kind of, you can tell Henry has a definitely some form of split personality. You can tell. There's a little bit of that. That's why he, but he, he definitely uses it to his advantage, though, because he's able to fool people. And because even obviously before, he, you know, he gets taken out in the end of this one, he was already setting up to have another family. He's already ready to woo another widow with a family. So, and go to another town and have a new alias and everything like that. So, but uh, yeah, I definitely recommend this one. I don't know. We'll see about if, I re if I'm going to recommend uh, the second one. but And then the remake, which I've not seen. Um, I remember seeing the trailer for the remake, though. I do remember seeing it around the time. I just didn't see the movie. But uh, we'll see if the remake holds up. I think I've seen the intro for the remake. I just wanted to see how it holds up. I'm not going to speak on it because i got to see it in the context. of the, the movie seems fine. The intro's done a bit differently. It's not as bloody, I'll say that. Like, the the way it looks like, it seems more like he poisoned his family. That's what it looked like. Compared to this one, obviously, you can tell there's blood. So, we'll see. I'm hoping the, the, the remake is decent. Because I don't hate all remakes. There are definitely, there are good horror remakes out there. So, anyways. Um, tomorrow, pending on... 
if Smile 2 is on the seas. If it isn't, we'll just do Stepfather 2 tomorrow. Probably later, though, because I'm going to be doing Watch Party with some buddies. Uh, should be doing the Watch Party with some buddies tomorrow. So, depending on how long that goes. It'll probably be sometime tomorrow. It'll be later tomorrow. And then, I guess it's either going to be Smile 2 or Stepfather 2. If not, if I do Smile 2 tomorrow, we'll do Stepfather 2 on Sunday. So, that's how I'm going to do it. Or, if Smile 2 is not on, we'll do Stepfather 2 on Saturday. And then, I guess Smile 2 is up by Sunday. We'll just watch it on Sunday. So, but anyways, guys. Um, sub to Pin Down Podcast. Link will be in the description. Other than that, I am going to call it here. And I'll figure out what I'm going to be doing next week. I know for sure BBS and Monday and Tuesday have set. Halloween Kills rewrite. I'm still going to keep the name Halloween Kills. That's still going to be the name. I'm keeping that name. And then we'll do the rewrite for that um, on Monday. And then Tuesday, BBS, the finale of the Batman movies. At least live action ones, anyway. Uh, my live action Batman journey. So, granted, I've seen all these movies before. So, it's not it's like the first time I watched, but. You know, I figured since we were getting close to Batman Day at that time, I was like, let's do the Batman movies. I've been kind of mean to do them anyway. So, anyways, um, let's take a hint. Kind of crack in here. Talk to y'all tomorrow.